but cat, what are the sounds? K, a, t. So we segment the sounds and then we also build them up. So we use sound cards where every sound is every letter sound is represented on the card. And I will ask the student, all right, let's tap this. K at cat. Segment blend. We also, they also have to learn features of our language, such as the fact that we have digraphs, consonant digraphs in our in our language where we have an S and an H together and they say shh. Nothing like s and p at all. So with, they have to learn that, again, there might be four letters, but there are only three sounds, k, a, sh, in order to read and spell properly. Uh, gradually, we work up toward more sounds in the letter. So now, not only do we have a digraph at the end that says sh, we have two consonants where we hear each one, k, o, a, sh, clash. Um, so that has both a blend and a digraph, and, and uh, students have to know the difference between that. Many of us pick that up pretty naturally. There are certain people, I mean, again, this is dimensional. There are people who probably would have learned to read if they had been locked in a linen closet for seven years and they learned by reading the towel labels, you know. And they need little, if any, instruction, but most people need some explicit instruction in this. And even the very best readers, even the children who have no issues with any, any language issues at all, they do better. They're better spellers, especially. Um, and to some extent better readers if they have these, this kind of foundational knowledge. Um, so the rules governing speech sounds, you know, and also the fact that <clears throat> some letters just don't touch, you know. Uh, R and S don't go together. Uh, but and S and R don't really go together either, but STR is a blend. But if we turn it around anyway, we're not, they, those letters just can't be together. K and W never go together, you know, and so on. This is what we call orthographic judgment. Uh, and so we're going both directions, the symbol and the sound, and the sound and the symbol. So we teach them to look at the symbol and associate the sound at the same time, we teach them to listen to the sounds and associate the symbols. So we go through lots of practice like say, b, b. What says b? B. Identify it, there it is. Single sound, symbol, work, then work on at the word level and eventually connect to text. So it's a developmental process. Our language is not only just phonetic though, it's, it has a lot of uh, meaning parts. We have base words and suffixes. This is called morphology and our language is a morphophonetic language, if you didn't know that, meaning that not only do we have to know how to blend sounds uh, and symbols together and decode words, we have to understand some of the meaning part of it, too. Good readers know that uh, there will be, there's a base word, uh, <clears throat> and there are suffixes and prefixes that, uh, that, that, that carry meaning with them. So, you know, for example, ing means if we do, um, uh, we do what? Um, I keep wanting to put fish up here, so I guess I will. Uh, 
Okay, so our base word is fish, but then we can have, in addition to that, ing on top of fish, fishing. And we'll pretend that says ing. Okay, here it is. I'll write down it. I took all the suffixes on the yellow cards down today, stupidly. So we can have fish, fishing. Okay. Um, we could probably even make up a word that says pre-fish or pre-fishing, which I guess would be what? Getting your tying your flies, getting your tackle box together, whatever. So um, <clears throat> then we have way, subway, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a huge part of our language. So we have to, uh, we have to continually make children aware of the meaning part and then the parts of words that stick onto them that will vary it a little bit, you know, and, uh, and so on. Then um, the orthography or the rules of the language, like <clears throat> the doubling rule, the drop the e rule, um, and these are all these rules are um, are um, challenging, very challenging. I have tried so hard to teach the drop the E rule and the doubling rule to students who weren't ready for it, you cannot do it. You, you know, I have, I would have like all these like sort of flow charts, if this, then this, and so on. And fortunately, the Wilson reading system uh, does it in this very natural developmental way, so by the time the students get to the point when they, you know, are, are doing the doubling, you know, adding constant, changing the base word, it's just natural for them because they've learned lots of stuff leading up to it. Um, so um, what we need to do and when we intervene with students is not just teach them to sound out words and stop there. We need to teach them to sound out words and have them do it so automatically that they're not even aware they're doing it because otherwise They'll spend too much of their valuable cognitive resources trying to put the words together rather than looking at the meaning, which is the whole point of reading anyway. So, um, <clears throat> so we want to, uh, in interventions don't work unless children learn, overlearn some of these concepts. So they learn them so thoroughly that they can um, gradually add more on and so on. And uh, uh, that's one thing we've learned over time. It's not enough just to teach a little phonics and how to sound words out. They have to be able to do it quickly and automatically at the word level so they can read uh, with some speed. Um, and the best thing we can possibly do to cut down on the reading failure is to have very well-prepared, well-trained teachers in the earliest grades who understand the language concepts very well and how to teach them to young children. Um, so we need explicit, systematic instruction. There it is, you know. And uh, not just sort of throwing a little phonic principle in here and there. It's to be taught very explicitly and developmentally. And then it will work. Uh, so you want to have young children in kindergarten really working on phonemic awareness, sound awareness. And then <clears throat> you want to teach the very common sound spelling relationships in small words like dog and cat and uh, hit and run and so on. And then um, teaching children how to say those sounds and blend them in words. Um, and we want them to practice reading with text that includes, by and large, <coughs> the word patterns that they're studying so that they don't get confused and they get practice. As they get older, 
they can deal with more what we might call authentic text, which is actual reading, because their horizons have widened and they can handle it. Um, working on vocabulary and language comprehension all throughout this is crucial. And you can work on vocabulary and language comprehension without having children read. You can read to them and teach, and it's really important that we teach vocabulary and comprehension all along the way we can.